Good morning. Well, on behalf of Elisa and to Elisa, thanks everybody for coming to the tea yesterday. It was really a fun uh, time and uh, I got a big kick out of it. It was a little bit of chaos, but there were so many funny and fun things that happened during it. So we just appreciate all you guys coming. It was a great day yesterday and I was just kind of walking around the group. Wait, I didn't really stop moving, but, uh, you know, moving through the group and getting food out, that was like the quickest food has disappeared off the table at one time, so <laughs> Natalie and I were running around, and um, I just thought, how fun is this? This, ca this chaos, there were girls uh, ice skating on a pool, you know, just a lot of things were going on, but it was so much fun, and um, I was just thinking, like, how cool it is to get together and do that. These devices that we have, as wonderful as they are, and really they do, they are a great tool in many, many ways, they also oftentimes convince us that we're interacting with people and that we have this interaction, but we really don't. There's nothing like being in the presence of somebody and having a conversation with them face to face, eye to eye, where you can read their emotions, they can read yours, where you can feel the pain. We have kind of bought into a lie that anything that's just on here is good enough and that that's going to fulfill it. And, and um, there's actually studies showing that across the world, how it really is damaging um, long-term relationships, it's damaging all sorts of things. Because we think, oh, this is enough, and, and it does kind of fit that, fill that little void that you have. Like, oh, I got to just, oh, I got a little message, that's nice. But there is nothing like being in the presence of somebody. And there's nothing that can take that away, and, uh, and the value of that. And so I really encourage you to, um, I heard a, a thing this week that I found so interesting is, to, to, to be in the presence of people. And one of the, this uh, psychiatrist was saying that even if you schedule lunch with somebody that you almost dread, like you're like, I don't always love this conversation with this person, or you know, it's just kind of sometimes it's draining to be around them, that there's so many benefits from just going and being around somebody else and having a conversation and the growth that takes place from that. So I really encourage you to foster friendships and relationships. In Hebrews 10 and 19, I'm going to read on the NIV. It says, therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way opened for us through the curtain that is his body, what he's referring to is when Christ died how that changed all everything for us. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful and let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching and what we're just talking about here is um you know, we don't, we don't harp a whole lot on attendance here, and we, we never have and we never will. And, and we, don't, we really firmly believe that the church does serve a purpose, but the church is also out there. And that your relationships that you have and your friendships are there, that you can have church with a friend at coffee. I mean, you can, we, we don't deny that. Well, we also really, really believe, and my dad and I were just talking about this week, there is so much value in coming together and encouraging one another, provoking one another to do good deeds, encouraging one another, like I said, just to be around. It was just so fun to be in a room full of ladies. You know, um, we had somebody come and surprise their mom there. And like, it's just so fun to, those things we think are so little and mundane and they don't really matter in life, but they do. And for us to get together as a body, whether it's in this building or at your dining, dining room table, or at a coffee house, whatever it is, that is so valuable, and that's where church takes place, and that's where growth takes place. So I do really encourage, man, these little moments that we get to have with one another, don't take them lightly. They're really, really precious, and they feed our souls. They feed our hearts. They feed our minds. It's where growth takes place. Sitting across from someone, listening to them, even if it's something you don't agree with, that's where growth takes place. So don't, um, don't neglect the, the value of community in the body of Christ. So if you just stand, we're going to take up our tithes and offerings. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for what a fun weekend it's already been, and we just bless these women that are in our congregation. And if I missed anyone, Lord, we pray that you just bless them too. We're just so thankful that we are surrounded by people who love you. 
who are committed to growing and to changing and to doing all that they can for your kingdom. And we're just so grateful for them. We just pray that you bless them in these days to come, that this next year is one of the best years of their life, just full of growth and change and excitement and adventure, Lord. And we just Thank you for the opportunity that you um, created all those years ago for us to get together as a body, and we do not take it lightly. Whether it's in these four walls or anywhere else, Lord, help us to be mindful of like what a joy it is to just be in the presence of other people and that there's value there. Help us to encourage one another. Help us to provoke one another to do good deeds. In your name I pray, amen.